So, I mentioned a few episodes ago, one of my very first ones, about how my little church is going through the Gospel of John, and I mentioned the woman at the well. That was such a great story. Um, You know, she comes at the well at midday, which is not the time to come to the well. That's the hottest point in the day. You go early in the morning or later in the afternoon as the sun's low in the sky. And uh, it's interesting to note that when Jesus came by to stop and sit at the well, that it said uh, earlier in the passage that, uh, I like the way the King James puts it, he must needs go through Samaria. Jesus had a plan. And he sits there at the well and waits for the plan to come into play. So she comes out to get the water. She's by herself. Jesus is by himself. The disciples went into town to grab some lunch. And he asked her for a drink of water. She's flabbergasted because he's a Jewish man asking a Samaritan woman for help. And uh, so anyway, he, uh, he proceeds to tell her that if she knew who she was talking to, she'd be asking him for a drink. They continue in this conversation concerning water. Obviously, Jesus is speaking quite metaphorically. But then he tells her to go back and get her husband and bring him back out. She says, sir, I have no husband. And he says, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, You've had five husbands before, and the man you're shacking up with right now, you're not married to. So she tries to divert the conversation by flattering Jesus, by saying, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And so she tries to get theological with him, distract him. She doesn't realize that that's exactly the path he's wanting to take with her. So they continue to talk. They talk about worship. Um, Jesus points out that worship is a matter of the heart, not a matter of location. Um... So, then she says to him, we know that when the Messiah comes, that he will reveal all things to us. And Jesus says, I am he. So, she runs back into town, tells everybody about how this man knew everything about her. And they come out, meet Jesus, go back, Jesus and his disciples go back into town. They spend a few days with them, and the whole town comes to follow Christ. Now the interesting thing is when she says, we know that when Messiah comes, he will reveal all things to us, the Samaritans had a different word for the Messiah than the Jews did. The the Jews had uh, the Hebrew word Messiah, which is obviously we can hear our uh, transliteration of that word Messiah. But the Samaritans had a word, they referred to him as Tahav, which means revealer. And it's interesting to note that Jesus kind of referred back to when he told her that he knew everything about her as a point of reference for him being able to say to her, I am to have for you, for your people. The one-on-ones in the Gospel of John are fabulous, and I can't encourage people enough to read the Gospel of John, whether you're a believer or not. In fact, I've had people who are unbelievers ask me, where should I start? in reading scripture, and I always point them to the Gospel of John first. Um, But looking at the way Jesus loved that woman, the way he interacted with her, the information he gave her, and according to the biblical record, she is the first one that he revealed who he was to. Um, Not only did he reveal that he was the Messiah to a Samaritan, not another Jew, but he also revealed it to a woman who is considered to be less than anything. In fact, a Samaritan woman was the lowest of the low, according to early rabbinical writings that I've, uh, I've sourced. One rabbi wrote that Samaritan women were menstruants from birth, meaning that they were perpetually unclean and never to be touched or had anything to do with. But Jesus broke that. He broke that. Jesus was always breaking stuff. <laughs> and... Uh, 
He broke down that wall. He broke down that man-made partition. And Jesus continues to do that today with people. Um, so just uh, take that, think about it, mull it around in your head a little bit, see what you think about Jesus uh, being that guy, that guy that loves everybody and doesn't see skin color, ethnicity, denomination, uh, none of that stuff matters to him. He loves everybody, he reaches out to everybody and wants everybody to know him and have a relationship with him. So, um, let's pray. Father God, again, we come before you today. We thank you for everything. We thank you for breaking the wall between heaven and earth and coming down, Lord Jesus. Coming down to save us, to love us, to show us the way. Pray for our family and our friends, especially those who are far from you. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day, guys.